Hey everyone, it's Richard Solomon, and I'm really glad you could join me today on another one of these Millionaire Mindset Tips. Do you know that sometimes the biggest obstacle that you will face is yourself? If you haven't already, be sure to join, uh, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification bell so that you will be updated when there is new content. All right, so good morning, good evening, and good night, depending on where and when you're viewing this. I've been talking about obstacles that can stand in the way of consultants, entrepreneurs, um, people who are self-employed, freelancers, those kinds of things, those kinds of people. And uh, in previous videos, I talked about systemic obstacles. I also talked about uh, other people being obstacles. But I want to talk this morning a little bit about, and it's morning for me, uh, a little bit about self-obstacles. And I suspect uh, the largest challenge that you could possibly face when striking on a pathway that is different is self. Let me talk a little bit about that. So if you think about it, uh, the human brain is made up of some very distinct parts. And the parts I'd like to focus on are what we call the brain stem or the lizard brain uh, or the reptilian brain if you want, the mammalian brain or that middle brain, that emotional brain, and the neocortex or the new brain, new means new. And in our, if you think about how the brain works, uh, the part of the brain that uses the most energy is the lizard brain. As a matter of fact, when we are in difficult situations, changing situations, um, the, 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 the lizard brain interprets that as a threat. And, and I call it, it's called the lizard brain because lizards and reptiles, all of the reptiles have that same brain structure. And maybe I should tell you what that is responsible for is fight, flight, um, self-preservation. So all the things that we don't have to think about to stay alive, self-preservation. And so the way that brain interprets new situations, um, changes is these are threats and and because they are threats then we can in a, in in effect be harmed and to the lizard brain a threat sorry can mean death so what happens in change or in difficult situations or in new situations very often is that uh, blood flow actually increases to increases to the lizard brain and the mammalian brain or the emotional brain and reduces to the neocortex. Said differently, we become more reactive, we become more emotional, and we become less smart. Got that? So you will hear yourself saying, you can't do this, this is too much. What makes you think you can go forward and blaze a trail where others did not succeed, they, they failed? Uh, what gives you the right to be special, to, to strike out and do more and, and become more? And therefore, those self-doubts, those, I'm not sure I can make it, oh, I can't, I know someone who didn't and uh, who tried and didn't, all of those are very often manifestations of your reactive brain, lizard brain, uh, brain stem, trying to keep you safe from getting into situations where you might fail, where you might not be as effective, efficient, uh, you may not be as competent as you were. You hear phrases like, I know what I have, I don't know what I'll get. The devil that you know is better than the devil that you don't know. And so we are actually built for safety as humans. We are built for safety. Now, you have to overcome yourself. I like to say, get out of your own way. Uh, if you want everything to be perfect, uh, if you want uh, all the ducks to, to be as they should be, all the ducks to line up in a nice, neat row, before you strike out or before you try something new, you're never going to get started. I remember hearing a quote from someone called Eileen Fisher. I think she has a clothing line. And she has this phrase, she says, perfect enough. You know, you can, you, can, you can get out there, you can get started, even if things are not perfect. So be very careful of that brain that really is designed to keep you alive and really uh, evolved at a time when humans faced different threats to the ones that we face now. Uh, don't allow that to stand in, don't, don't allow yourself to stand in your way. Self-obstacles, self-threats are so... Um, are so evident we see it in our society where people say i can't and if you believe you can't trust me you can't you are totally correct you know i made a statement uh in a post recently 
if you if your learnings are fixed then more than likely your earnings will need to be fixed meaning if your learnings are fixed and are at a particular point they don't move then eventually your earnings are also going to need to be fixed or repaired because what's going to happen is the market uh your customers your clients uh the world is going to outstrip you it's going to go past you another thing that happens as it relates to self obstacles is that uh, we we have this thing called self doubt, and it very often manifests itself in a in a way that is often referred to as imposter syndrome, where we believe somewhere deep inside ourselves that someone is going to find out that we're not really what we say we are, who we say we are. Imposter syndrome. I've heard the story of Maya Angelou having this challenge where you know she 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 would think that one day somebody's going to come and find out she's not as great as she as as the rest of the world thinks that she is. We all face it. This doubt, this, am I really as good as other people say that I am? I have faced that, this challenge of wondering, what are they so impressed by? But I'll tell you what, someone said, and I can't quote, uh, but this, I didn't make this up, I can't tell you who, who, who said this quote, genius never recognizes itself. Genius never recognizes itself. Most people don't know how great they are, and all of us, no, I should say, none of us know how far we can go. So the imposter syndrome, I am not as good as some people say, or am I really good enough to make this happen? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I was having a conversation with some of my staff yesterday, and um, uh, we were talking about how people think and how people learn and so on. And they always make this comment that I think differently. And I said, I don't know that. And, you know, they say, you have a different brain. And I said, no, I don't believe that. I don't have a different brain. Maybe I stick with things a little bit longer than most people. Maybe I overthink things. Maybe I wrangle with issues and challenges a little bit longer than most people. But no, we all have the same brain. Our brains work the same. Now, are some people's brains more adept at some things, art, music, logic, science, whatever it is, than others? Absolutely. But biologically, the, the structure is the same. And so... While you may say, well, I don't know if I'm good enough to do this or that. Here's what I'll say to you. Start where you are. Start with what you have. That's perfect enough. And then take a step, one step at a time, to get you to a higher place. Get you to a higher place. You don't have to start out being uh, a consultant who um, has a written a book, uh, who, has not, who has traveled to 40 countries, who has worked with Fortune 100 companies. You, nobody starts out there. No one starts at that place. And another thing, and I'll talk about this in another video, don't compare yourself to others. We all are on our own journey. Don't allow yourself to get in your own way. Get out of your own way. If you make an excuse, it's good enough. It's going to stop you. Get out of your own way. Step forward and create the life that you want. This is Richard Solomon. Glad you could join me and I will see you soon.